So what if it's you who has to move fast? What do you do? What do you take? How to make sure you are as protected as possible? We're going to get you some solid tips in a moment. But first, we'd really like you to meet Chris Erickson, who is living this. He learned from an image on the news that his home in West Kelowna had burned beyond repair. So, Chris, every time I think of that, I cannot imagine what this is like for you. Can you walk us through that moment you figured out what had happened to your wow. home? Yeah, um, we we evacuated uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, just before the order was put out. So we were slightly ahead of uh, ahead of the curve on getting out, and so we grabbed what we could and and threw it in the truck, and and away we went. And then we saw a, a photo published in one of the local newspapers that showed this massive wall of flames uh, right behind our house. And uh, from that point, both my wife and I started gearing up to face the fact that we could have lost everything. Uh, we got confirmation Saturday morning from a group of neighbors. Um, uh, one sent us a video clip that's since, since been taken down um, uh, uh, where we could see a helicopter fighting the fire at our house. Um, the second was a doorbell video uh, uh, taken from our neighbor whose, whose front door faces our, faces our place. And that video was hard because we could see our house it just engulfed in flames. And then we could see the roof collapse in like just the whole structure basically just come down. Um, that was, it's, it's gut wrenching. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. it it's it's, it's gut wrenching. When you said when you're preparing to pack up and you just put everything in the truck, in that yeah. moment when you had a sense, yeah, it's time to go, what was important for you to take? And, and if, if you had the opportunity to pack up again, what would you do differently? Yeah. Um, you know, I spent a lot of my time prepping, like you we were supposed to do some, some prep work on the house. Um, so I spent a lot of my time doing that rather than packing my stuff. It's just stuff. The stuff that's irreplaceable is like my mom, uh, like my 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 wife's uh, mother's ashes were in the house and they're gone. Mm. Um, you know, heirlooms, uh, little notes and art projects from the kids when they were little. My kids are now adults, but but from when they were little, those are gone. Um, you know, there's there's very little that that we got out of the house with. Uh, you know, we were not thinking when we left that that was the last time we would see the south the house standing. That's for sure. I mean, it sounds, Chris, like you haven't had a moment to sit with this loss because you've already filed an insurance claim on your home. This must have been a headache, and there are going to be others in your shoes. What do you want people to know about the insurance process? One of the things that I would suggest for anybody is proceed with patience, mm -hmm. um, proceed with kindness, and uh, I think that that's going to help. Uh, you know, it's, it's really easy in situations like this to lose your cool, and it's and and it's really yeah it's really easy to just unload that on who's ever in front of you and and it's best to remember that the people that you're talking to they're just trying to do their jobs too and and you know if they have to if they have to fight with you it's going to be harder for them to do what they need to do so yes there's a lot of paperwork yes there's a lot of red tape yes there's a lot of a back and forth and insurance policies are written for lawyers <laughs> not not for regular people um, and so the wording can be confusing, but uh, it, you know, typically your adjuster will will walk you through the whole process. Um, the insurance companies are going to be looking for a record of what your possessions were, what did you actually lose, and so to have some kind of a record. I mean, if you don't have it, you don't have it. But at the same time, you can use other photos that are taken in and around the home to start filling the gaps. Um, that's and fortunately, we had a, a ton of video that we had actually gone through and, and sort of walked through the house for a different project. <laughs> um, and it just happened to be at the right time. So we got really lucky there. Absolutely. Chris, uh, we thank you very much for your calmness and for sharing uh, what you've been through with us. And really, yeah. best of luck to you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Across the country, there are so many people like Chris dealing with that same sudden loss. People need advice, so we're going to get some from Cheryl Evans, the Director of Flood and Wildfire Resilience at the University of Waterloo. Cheryl, thank you for being with us. I know you saw and heard what happened to Chris and his family. As someone who has this expertise in helping people through wildfire recovery, 
What really should people in Chris's position be doing right now? Um, he can register for emergency support services and he can do that online and then come in into the evacuation center, the reception center, and find out all the supports that are available for him, mental health services, financial support services, a wide variety of services. So it's not just about your own insurer. I mean, at, at, in a position like this, provincially there is help for you. That's right. The province is in charge of making sure people have the communication and the resources that they need as much as possible. Uh, subsidy supports that become available if disaster financial assistance available, is available in the future and mental health services. The other thing that's critically important is you get in the database so that they know you've arrived safely and they know how other people can connect with you. Okay, this is a good tip. And in terms of people who are listening tonight who might be evacuating next, is there anything that they can do to, I don't know, either prevent damage to their homes or at least take measures to minimize the risk and protect themselves? The vast majority of ignitions due to wildfire are because of embers that float through the air from the wildfire itself. So if you can reduce the risk that the floating embers will ignite things around your property or on your home, you can reduce the risk of ignition. So you can do basically what amounts to tidying up. Um, so around your house within 10 meters, uh, mow your lawn to 10 centimeters or less. If you've got, say, firewood or fuel tanks right beside your house, move them at least 10 meters away from the house. And share what you've learned with your neighbors because your house, if it's properly protected, uh, if the neighbor's house is ignited, then it can increase the chance that your house will ignite. Absolutely. And in terms of insurance, um, what can people who are anticipating evacuation do to make sure that at the end of the day they are compensated? Most insurance companies have um, a list that you can add on, an inventory list, so you can make sure you know exactly what you have and um, the estimated value. And so the more that you have details about what you had, the easier it is for the insurance company to understand how to restore your property to what you lost, and as well as the contents, not just the structure itself. One last thought. I think here's what might scare Canadians. Uh, major insurers seem to have pulled largely out of Florida now. California is worrying about becoming uninsurable. With, with these increasing disasters in Canada, do we need to worry about this too? That is not a present concern with the Canadian market. However, every year it changes. It's a numbers game. They have to look at uh, what is, um, what's an appropriate costing model in Canada. So what I like to say is that because insurance is um, a tool that we can use to reduce or manage our risk, one thing we need to do is protect that tool. So uh, reduce the risk that our homes will ignite, our neighbors' homes will ignite, and reduce the losses, minimize losses for insurance companies so that they can keep the, uh, the numbers manageable, keep insurance premiums affordable. Okay, Cheryl Evans, thank you for helping us out with uh, information that so many people across this country need. Thank you. You're very welcome.